Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. I'm Paul Tursellini, and in this episode, we'll be discussing weather data, including heating degree days and cooling degree days, and how this information is used to inform the delta T term of the Fourier's law of the heat transfer equation. Looking back at the Fourier's law equation, the rate of heat transfer through the wall is dependent on the delta T across the wall. Remember that the Q dot is the rate of heat transfer at one instant in time based on the temperature difference from inside to outside. However, the outside temperature is constantly changing with the weather. So the rate of heat transfer varies accordingly. The inside temperature then is something comfortable and it is pretty steady and it doesn't change much. If the outside temperature is the same as the inside temperature, then the amount of heat transfer through the wall is zero. If it is really cold outside, then the rate of heat transfer through the wall increases. Thinking about this on a bigger scale, colder climates have larger delta T's compared to mild climates. And so in these colder climates or in the winter when you're generally going to have a larger delta T, a common strategy is to reduce the inside temperature in order to reduce the delta T from inside to outside. This is often called a temperature setback. Technically, the Fourier's law equation needs to be evaluated for short periods of time since the delta T is constantly changing. And then this needs to be repeated many times to calculate the heat transfer over a long period of time like a day, a month, or a year. This is where energy modeling software comes in. It has the ability to look at these very small time sets and repeat the equation many times. It also has the ability to evaluate each layer of building material and include the thermal capacitance in the wall, which can store heat at each time interval. Due to the complexity of the math done by energy modeling software, we will focus now on a model of weather data that is an approximation, but it will give us the tools we need to think about some of the impacts of our design decisions. We will start by thinking of one hour time blocks. Each time block has a different outside temperature and potentially a different inside temperature. Looking first at the outdoor temperature, hourly weather data is collected at many locations and is available from a number of sources. This data has been transformed into data sets called typical meteorological years, or TMY data for short. More information about the format of this data can be found in the references. These data sets have been updated with the latest TMY version 3 or TMY 3. This data set represents a typical year of weather based on actual data for a 30 year period. Note that this is different than a 30-year average. Collecting weather data today is a highly automated process, but before computerized data acquisition, the data was collected manually, typically at airports. The thermometers could capture high and low temperature measurements for each day, and these data points allowed for the calculation of an approximate daily average temperature. When we think of our Q dot equation, if the value of U and A are constant, which is not a bad assumption, and if the wall has minimal thermal mass to store heat, then the delta T can be represented by an average temperature difference. This is quite a long list of ifs. Therefore, we will approximate the delta T of the average inside temperature minus the average outside temperature over the course of a day. If we multiply the rate of heat transfer Q dot times the period of time, that's little t, we will get the amount of heat transferred during that time. Writing this out, we see that Q is equal to U times A times delta T times little t, which is time. This equation with t equals 24 hours to represent the day and the delta T being the inside average temperature minus the outdoor average temperature will approximate the heat transferred during each day.
Another assumption is that the average in dark temperature is 65 degrees Fahrenheit. From this, the delta T is 65 minus the average temperature outdoors. When the average outdoor temperature is less than 65, the difference between these numbers is called the heating degree days. In this case, it would be for one day. You may think that 65 degrees Fahrenheit is a bit cool for you to be comfortable. 70 degrees is probably closer to a comfortable temperature. We gain a little heat from people in the building as well as running lights and appliances. As a result, 65 degrees is an approximation to be used in determining the heat transfer through the envelope. We'll talk more about this in the HVAC module. As an example, let's say the low for a winter day was zero and the high was 30 degrees Fahrenheit. The average temperature is then 15. Subtract that from 65 and the delta T for the day is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. We refer to this as 50 heating degree days or a 50 degree F day for units. These units are important, which we'll see in a moment. Remember that you only tabulate a heating degree day if it is a positive number. If the average temperature for the day is over 65, you ignore that day. We can add up degree days for a month or even a year and report that information as part of climate data. Many energy efficient See, building codes use heating degree days as the basis for climate zones and for determining the minimum level of energy efficiency requirements for heating and cooling equipment. The heating degree days are tabulated in a number of places, with some examples provided in the reference section. While dated, the TMY based heating degree days are located in an NREL publication. They are tabulated by location. As you can see in this example below, the information is tabulated on a monthly basis as well as an annual basis. Cooling degree days are calculated in a similar manner except they are tabulated when the average outdoor temperature is above 65. A day with a high temperature of 90 degrees Fahrenheit and a low temperature of 70 has 15 degree F days. Uh, a few other notes. You cannot do a unit translation with heating degree days from the English set of units to the SI units. You have to retabulate. Rather than use a base temperature of 65 degrees Fahrenheit, a base temperature of 18 degrees Celsius is used. These values are also widely available, including from the NREL Red Book. Other base temperatures are also used, such as 50 degrees Fahrenheit for growing degree days. This term is often used by farmers and gardeners. Heating and cooling degree days tend to work best when there are large temperature differences from inside to outside and in buildings that have limited thermal mass which acts to store heat. In addition, on the cooling side, if there's a lot of humidity, cooling degree days tend to be less accurate. As we mentioned when we started this episode, this is an application of Fourier's law that is a model. Now the fine print. This model is a steady state instantaneous heat transfer model, which is best for heat transfer pathways that are lightweight. Heavy walls, such as concrete, can store heat as the inside and outside temperatures change. Models try to represent the physical phenomenon, but come with assumptions that make them approximations. In this case, while it may not be exactly right, it will provide us with some insights on how heat transfer from a building and the resulting energy consequences, hopefully leading us to think about how to reduce the energy needs of buildings. Computerized energy models can account for many of these complexities. Now for an example, consider a wall that is 40 feet long and eight feet high. The total insulation of the wall is R12 and it is located in a climate with 6100 degree F days per year. Approximately how much heat leaves the building through this wall. Starting with our equation for heat transfer through the wall, or any other envelope component for that matter, we know that heating degree days is expressed as delta T and time. Area we can calculate and U can be replaced with 1 over R. 
The area is the length of the wall times its height, or in this case, 40 feet times 8 feet, which equals 320 square feet. Therefore, the heat transfer is 320 square feet times the 6100 degree days. Note the units. Divided by the R value of 12, which also has units, and those units are feet squared, degrees Fahrenheit hour, over BTU. If you work through the units of each term in this equation, they don't cancel, in particular the time units. So we need to convert days into hours with 24 hours per day in the numerator. With that, the resulting units are BTU, and the answer is 3.9 million BTUs that go through the wall annually. Starting to think about design, we can reduce this number by having a smaller wall, i.e. a smaller building, increasing the value of R, or reducing the number of heating degree days by moving the building to another location, which is probably not likely. Often the solution is to choose to increase the insulation. So, for example, doubling the insulation from R12 to R24 will reduce the heat transfer in half to 1.95 million BTUs per year. That's all for this episode. Please let us know if you have any questions or comments. And as always, thanks for watching.